Hi, I'm Julius Sacramento. I'm a solutions architect at AWS. And in this video, I'm going to talk about configuring SQL Server analysis services with AWS Elastic Load Balancer. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys a quick overview of SQL Server analysis services and AWS Elastic Load Balancer. Why we want to use AWS Elastic Load Balancer with Microsoft SQL Server analysis services. And I'm going to show you guys a demo and a walkthrough on actually how to do it. So what is Microsoft SQL Server Analysis Services and AWS Elastic Load Balancer? So let's start with SQL Server Analysis Services. So it is part of the SQL Server suite, meaning once you purchase SQL Server, it comes with SQL Server Analysis Services for your online analytics. It also comes with SSIS for your um, plastic transform and load processes, as well as um, SSRS for your reporting needs. So SSIS is an analytical data engine used in decision support and business analytics. It is a great BI tool for developing online analytical processing or OLAP solutions, such as reporting and dashboards. It enables users and analysts to create cubes by extracting data from other databases, data marts, or other data warehouses, thereby ensuring profound and swifter analysis. So what is Elastic Load Balancer? So AWS Elastic Load Balancer basically distributes incoming application or network traffic across multiple targets, such as Amazon EC2 instances, containers, and IP addresses in multiple availability zones. So what are the benefits of using AWS Elastic Load Balancer? So using AWS ELB increases the availability and fault tolerance of your applications. You can add and remove compute resources from your load balancer as your needs change without disrupting the overall flow of requests to your applications. You can also configure health checks, which are used to monitor the health of the compute resources so that the load balancer can send and route traffic only to the healthy ones. So there are three types that supported in AWS Elastic Load Balancer. The first one is the application load balancer, which operates at layer seven. It is best suited for load balancing HTTP and HTTPS traffic, which is basically your web application or web service. The second one is the network load balancer, which operates at layer four. It is best suited for load balancing of TCP traffic where extreme performance is required. And this is what we're going to be using to configure our SSAS and ELB. The last type is the classic load balancer, which provides basic load balancing across multiple Amazon EC2 instances and operates at both the request level and connection level. Why do we want to use AWS Elastic Load Balancer with SQL Server Analysis Services? AWS ELB is a native managed load balancer service that seamlessly integrates with other AWS services, along with your various applications within your IT infrastructure. Now, traditionally, SSAS high availability is done through failover clustering, which is active passive only. With AWS ELB, you can easily provide an active-active SSAS farm configuration, similar to what you would have in a fully active web application. Now, the ease and straightforward configuration and setup of ELB allows you to focus more on your application needs. So in this case, SSAS. And now I'm going to do a quick demo and walkthrough on how to actually do SSAS and ELB configuration. All right, so I'm going to do a quick demo on using Elastic Load Balancer with our SSAS servers. Um, in our VPC, we can see that we can, we can actually see the two SSAS servers that we're going to be putting behind the Load Balancer. And then we're going to go ahead and actually use our jump server, which is this one, to essentially access the, and manage the two SSAS servers. So let's go ahead and RDP into our jump server. So within our jump servers um, here, we can actually uh, manage our SSAS servers utilizing uh, Management Studio. 
as you can see, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and connect to our one of our SSAS servers. And let's go ahead and do another connection to our second SSAS servers. Right. As you can see, both already have a, a tabular configuration with a, a database that's ready. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up um, an elastic load balancer. All right, so let's go here to load balancer and let's go ahead and create one. So to do a, an elastic load balancer configuration, we need to do an L NLB um, on a specific port. Okay, so let's go ahead and name that. Um, SSAS ELP. And then um, specifically for SSAS configuration, we're going to be using port 2383, which is a default port um, for SSAS. Then we're going to be using uh, the VPC, which actually houses the two SSAS servers. And then we're going to choose an internal facing. We have to make sure there it's an internal facing elastic load balancer. And we're going to choose the subnet where the two um, SSAS servers reside. All right. Now um, let's create a target group. All right. And then let's go ahead and specify the port that will be forwarded, which is um, 2383. All right. Okay. And then let's hit, click on the advanced health check. So here I'm going to go ahead and just put one since we're basically just have uh, two SSAS servers. We don't want to um, do a lot of weight on it whenever one is unhealthy. And let's do an interval of 10 seconds. All right, um, let's do two actually. And then let's do register target. And then here we just need to choose the two SSAS servers that we want to register. All right, so these are the two SSAS servers. And then we'll hit next, review, and hit create. All right, so this might take a bit of time to create, so I'm going to pause the video right here. All right, now as you can see, we actually have the Elastic Load Balancer up and active, right? So if you want to go and look at the health status of the targets underneath the Load Balancer, you can go to Target Groups. And from here, you can look at the target uh, tab and you would see the um, instances that we have behind the load balancer. As you can see, um, the evaluation is healthy. So what that means is um, all the connections are going to be actively load balanced between the two based on demand and capacity, right? Okay, so now let's go back to our uh, jump server. Now that we have the elastic load balancer, let's go ahead and copy the information of the load balancer so we're going to go ahead and copy this dns name which is essentially what we're going to be using to connect to our ssas servers okay so here let's put our dns name connect and as you can see we're connected to the load balancer and now the load balancer is routing on to one of the servers right that's part of what it's basically balancing now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick validation. Let's do a quick query. And then what we're gonna actually query is where we're being routed, okay? So now let's run this query and see. And as you can see, we're actually being routed to the secondary server here. So what we wanna go ahead and test is how um, load the load balancer would actually act once one of the servers goes down. So in this case, let's try to go ahead and shut down SSAS2, right? Go ahead and shut that down. All right? And then let's go back to our load balancer here. Because again, as I said, if you go to target groups, you can look at the, um, the health of the servers. Now it takes a bit of time um, to reevaluate the instances. So let's go ahead and pause the video real quick. All right, let's go ahead and reevaluate again. And as you can see, now the SSAS2 server has been validated and is now unhealthy. Now let's go back and let's do another query. All right, let's go ahead and uh, run the query again. So this is expected because the connection was lost. Um, let's go ahead and run the query again to reestablish connection. Now we see that we're now being routed to SSAS1. So that's basically it. 
So in summary, AWS Elastic Load Balancer allows you to easily create and configure a fully active SSAS farm. Thank you.